What would make someone want to take someone's life just because they're dating someone else? On the flip, what would make a married person step out of their marriage? This story is full of greed, lies, and deceit. We will be talking about Anaya Mack during this video. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Anaya Mack was only 24 when her life was viciously taken at the hands of her boyfriend, Donovan Lewis. The people on the bottom we're going to get to in a little bit, but just to let you know, that's a pastor and his wife. And things started to get a little bit seedy when Anaya started to have a relationship with the pastor. So basically when her boyfriend found out, of course he couldn't handle the fact that his girlfriend was seeing someone else. Anaya was born on February 8th, 1994. She lost her life at the tender age of 24. She attended Muskegon Heights High School. She was very active in the National Honor Society, cheerleading squad, and the marching band, where she was captain of the majorettes. Upon graduating in 2012, she attended Western Michigan University and joined the dance team. Anaya loved dancing, singing, doing hair, and makeup. She was the diva of her family, and friends. Anaya met her boyfriend and things started to change in her life. This is Pastor Strick Strickland. This is the guy who Anaya was having a relationship with. And he is married. And he also has a sketchy past. I can't really get into that during this video. So there's a link in the bio for more. And this is Jasmineke Strickland. This is the wife who was basically there during all of his tawdry things that he has done. These two have been charged in other accounts, but not in this case. Lewis said that he initially became suspicious of the relationship between his girlfriend and the married pastor when the pastor gave her a car and paid her rent and would often stop by her apartment. The former Kalamazoo Valley Community College basketball player also said that he took a screenshot of an inappropriate text message that the pastor had sent to Mac. He showed it to the detectives and it read, I'm trying to give you the best time of your life, but you running from it. The pastor denied the allegations. He stated that offering Mac financial assistance or any kind of help wasn't out of the ordinary, as he had helped several members of the church who were in need. He also provided an alibi for the day of Anaya Mac's disappearance, claiming that although he saw her, it was brief, and the rest of the day was spent with his wife. Just as the detectives were about to contact the pastor's wife, they received a phone call from Mac's friend regarding a social media post that Donovan Lewis had made. In the post, he wrote, I am so sorry for what I have done. I just hope all of you can forgive me. As soon as the detectives received this information, they went to the home of Donovan Lewis where he lived with his grandmother. When they knocked on the door, Lewis exited the house with his hands behind his back and said, just take me in and we'll talk about it on the way. One of the detectives lost their cool and said, just tell me now. Then Donovan Lewis confessed to fatally injuring Anaya Mack. While talking to the authorities, Lewis stated that on June 24th, he and his girlfriend were having drinks at her apartment. 
While under the influence, he decided to ask Mac about her illicit relationship with the pastor. An argument happened soon after, and Lewis just says that he lost his cool. He proceeded to hit her in the face, and she fell unconscious. After that, he went into the kitchen to get a sharp, large object to fatally injure her. While doing that, he also took a bag, placed it over her head, and also put the rest of her body in a trash bag. After that, he placed the whole body in a suitcase and placed it in a dumpster for just a little bit. He then went to the dumpster around noon the next day and got the body and loaded it in his van. He then placed the whole suitcase in the creek. He told all of this to the authorities. The next morning, he showed detectives the location of Anaya Mack's body. Her body hadn't started the process of decomposition because of the cold water and mud. Even after confessing what he did to Anaya, he still attempted to do the unthinkable. On September 19th, Lewis made an attempt to escape from jail. While kicking a soccer ball between two other inmates in the recreation yard, he sprinted towards the security fence and hopped over it. It was reported that he jumped over two more fences that were topped with barbed and razor wire. The Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety officers apprehended Lewis about 33 minutes later. He said he didn't try to escape to run from his problems. He said it was solely out of concern for the safety of his family because they were supposedly getting threats. Lewis appeared before Judge Paul Brinstein at the Kalamazoo County Circuit Court where the victim's aunt gave a victim impact statement. Detectives found no evidence that Anaya Mack and her pastor were having an illicit affair or relationship and that the motive behind her fatal injury was a tragic misunderstanding. When her aunt was asked, does she forgive Donovan? This is what she said. Well, he have to live with it for the rest of his life. You know, whether he was sincere with what he said in the courtroom or not, he has to live with it. And I hope he can, and I meant that. I haven't forgiven him. My sister, I haven't. And in time, I'm sure I will, but not now. Not ready. 